Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you everything that you're going to be learning in this mastery course for Google Docs. So what you will be learning is how to create a Google account, how to create documents in Google Docs, the basic op options of Google Docs, which is just the undo, the redo, and then we're also going to be learning the edit tab, which is right here, Cut, copy, paste, all of that, formatting text for the font, the font size, etc. View tab, you can change all of these. Insert tab for creating tables, charts, and charts. Format tab for adding some strike throughs and superscript. The tools tab for creating your own personal dictionary and adding a word count. The file tab for downloading your documents as PDFs or docx files from Microsoft Word and how to share your document with other people so then they're able to add comments or edit the document or even just view it. We'll also be learning how to install and use add-ons so then you can increase your efficiency with Google Docs. Finally, you're going to be learning a lot of patience because you're going to run into problems with Google Docs, but you'll just push through it by searching answers and doing everything you can to problem solve. So. I hope you guys just watch the next video of this course. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a Google account so then we can use Google Docs for free in this course. So to do that, you just have to go to accounts.google.com. And then we should see a sign-in button, but we actually want to create an account, so we're just going to hit this create account button. And then you're going to enter your first name last name, your username, which is also your email, and you can also use your current email address by just hitting that button, and then you have to enter your password and confirm your password, which have to follow these guidelines, and then you would sign in, and then you should see this page right here on Google, or you would see an accounts.google website. So to go to Google Docs, we could hit this apps icon right here for Google Apps, and then we are actually just going to hit this docs button right here. Or you could go to docs.google.com. And then right here is where we're going to be for the next video in this course. See ya. Hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a new blank Google Docs document. So all you have to do is once you've navigated to docs.google.com, all you have to do is press this big plus next to the blank. And it'll create a new Google Docs document for you and this has all the default presets on it so I hope I'll see you guys in the next video hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a new Google Docs document from one of their templates so to see all of the templates all you have to do is hit this template gallery and it'll show you all of their templates you're also able to download templates from online but I won't be going over that so you can scroll down and see all of these templates, and I'm just going to hit this brochure one. So once you hit that, it'll create a new document with this template. So you can edit all of the content on here, and it already has a document that looks nice and has all of these images on it. You just have to change the text to your needs. So I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to undo and redo in Google Docs. So basically how this works is if I delete all this text right here, and then clear the formatting, pressing this button right here, then you can press this undo button, and it will undo what you just did. So if I just type in a bunch of text right here, the planet is big, that's what came to my mind. And if I press the undo, then it'll undo the past couple of uh, moves that I did. So if I change the font size, Georgia right here, and I put in yeah, then it should, if I press undo, remove yeah. And then you can see it also removed the font size because the yeah was the only text that was that font size. And if I press undo again, and it should undo part of the plant is big. As you can see, it did only uh, the certain amount of the past. 
if I do undo again, it'll just remove all of that. And it also brings back the Georgia and all of the formatting that I had before. If I press redo, and I'll redo the past things that I just did undo. And if I press it again, then you can see it's bringing back what I had. So the shortcuts for this is for going, for doing undo is control Z. So I can do control Z, and then I'll undo everything. And the redo is control Y. So I can do control Y, and then I'll redo everything. So you can just have a continuous undo, redo. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys watch the next one. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to print documents in Google Docs. So all you have to do for that is press this print icon on the left, and you can see the shortcut is Control P or Command P. And then you just press this, and you can see it opens up a print dialog. And this is because my browser is Chrome. This would be this is based upon your uh, browser. This is what handles it. But you can see there's a bunch of settings on here, and then you just press the print button, and then it would automatically print it, and you can see the document right here. So this is actually in a PDF format, as you can see. So I'm just going to press cancel because I don't really want to print it. But if you guys wanted to print your documents, then all you have to do is do Control P or press this icon. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to do spell check in Google Docs. So all you have to do to check the spelling of your whole page is this button right here that has an A and a check marks. And it's for spelling and grammar check. And the shortcut for that is Control Command Alt X. So I'm just going to write in some wrong text and I'm going to do the ta blue bunny was cool to look at actually i accidentally did this but you can see right here if i press this spelling and grammar check and you can see that it automatically underlines it and you can change it to their suggestions if you right click it you can also add feedbacks for if it's right or wrong but if you press this button right here and it'll review through your whole page and look at all the errors that you have you can see that it says change ta to the which is what i wanted and change bunny to bunny. And you can see now it shows that my whole document is good. And it also checks for passive voice and uh, incorrect. So if I had like the man were. So if it was like if I had a singular object and I was trying to act like it was plural with the verb, that'd be incorrect. So then it would underline that with a blue underlining. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I've shown you how to copy the format of text using this paint format button. So basically what this does, if I change this uh, iteration of the blue man work cool to look at, I change the font to Georgia, and then I change this font right here for the second iteration to uh, Comic Sans, I change this size 15 and I can change this color or I can just make it italicized as you can see they look so different but they're actually the same text but I can copy the format by clicking on this paint format button and then scrolling over whatever I want to copy the format of and it copies that and then you're able to just press this and then paste that onto this. And as you can see, it automatically copies the formatting of this and adds it to this. So you can see the font is Georgia now. The font sizes are the same. Everything is the same about these because I copied it. And if I do Control Z or Undo, and you can see if I want to redo it, I can just scroll over the text. Or you could also just do one character. And then if I just hit this paint format, it copies whatever you're uh, selecting, the formatting of it. So all of the text size, the color of it, if it's a link, all of that. And then whatever you hover over, it'll add that formatting to. And it completely copies it. So this is actually hard, uh, a tool that I actually didn't know about how to use.
before doing some research on it. So I hope you guys learn how to use it and use it well. So I hope I see you in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the zoom of your Google Docs document. So how to do that is you just press this zoom icon, this zoom button right here, and you can change the percentage of it by pressing this drop down using their presets. Or you can also change the number directly by editing this and putting in a number. So if I wanted to change this to 10%, I press enter. You can see it changes the zoom to 50% actually, because that's the minimum that it can have. And I'm guessing 200% is also the maximum. So if I try to do that by putting in or 50%, yeah, 200% is the maximum and 50% is the minimum. So I can do 165%, and that is actually an exact because it's within these boundaries. Also, you're able to press the fit button, which won't just make it so that it fits all the content without having to have a horizontal scroll bar. And so you can see it just zooms this page larger and smaller based upon your uh, so the zoom per percentage that you've set. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to cut, copy, and paste in Google Docs. So I'm just going to put in some dummy text in here, and we're going to brown bear, purple cat, and we're going to have white dog. We're going to be copying and pasting this text in. So the first option is we have to go to this edit tab right here underneath the title. And you can see that there is a cut, copy, paste, and paste without formatting. So these are all the uh, options that we're going to be learning in this video. So the first one is cut, and that basically deletes the text but copies it before it does. So if I do cut, which is control X, to delete brown bear. But if I right click right here and also paste, and you can have these four options right here. If I just do paste, you can see it does brown bear. So if I just want to copy the text, then I can just do copy, which is control C, and that will not delete the text. So it just copies it, so it duplicates it. And if I want to just paste, you do control V or just hit the button paste, or you can right click for all of these and press the button. So the other paste option is paste without formatting. So if I had brown bear, but then I changed the font size to courier new, if I copy this, but then I paste, oh, sorry, copy this, but then I paste without formatting, you can see it doesn't have the same uh, font right here. Whereas if I do just the paste, you can see it has the formatting. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you a very simple feature called Select All. So to access it, you just have to hit the Add Edit tab, and then you can see Select All right here. So to do this, you can also do Control A, and once you press it, it'll just select all of the text. So if I just copy this, and then I just paste it here, you can see that it just selected all of the text and pasted it in. And note that it included the enter because actually right here there was an enter there. So I'll see, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the find and replace option in Google Docs. So how do you access this function is by going to the edit tab and going all the way to the bottom and it says find and replace or you can also do control H. Also, another way to access it is by doing Control F for find and then hitting the three dots. So I'm just going to hit this edit tab and then find and replace. And so you can see you can find text and then replace with. And there's also match case, which means like if there's an, a lowercase a and then an uppercase a, these would be different if it was match case. They would be the same because it's both a if you didn't have match case on. Also, there are ignore Latin di diacritics. Okay, yeah. And so that basically says that these accented letters, it will just say that it's the thing, the letter without the accent. So if I wanted 
to change all of the man inside of this these three sentences that I made in like five seconds you would just have to do man because if I mess up and I actually want it to be woman I could just replace all of that with woman and then I would actually want to do match case and then I can just do replace all and it'll replace all of the instances of man with woman and then also I have he right here so I would just do he and then replace Oh wait, no, I would have to have space in front of it and at the end of it. So then you can see there's a space right here, a space right here, to make sure that it's not inside of another word, like they. So then I can replace he, and since I have the spaces in there, I need to put the spaces in here. And then I want to ju just do she. And then I have space at the end. And since I had match case on, it wasn't matching this he with this he because this is a lowercase h. I'm just going to do uppercase h and then turn on match case and then replace all. And you can see it makes it she and also I have him right here. I'm just going to do find him and we're going to replace him with her and then replace all. And you can see that it fixes everything. And this may seem a little pointless on this small scale project. But if you had thousands of words, then you wouldn't want to go through every single man and change it to woman, and every single her and change it, every single him and change it to her. Also, another use for this is when you're doing parenthetical citing for an essay, you would have to do, uh, you would have to have every single source within the parentheses, and you'd have to paste it in. But an easy way that I found to get around this. Is to just put number one, not just one, because you may have a one somewhere else inside of your page. But if you had number one, repeat. If you had one source repeatedly used, just put source number one and make sure you have like a dictionary so then you know which source number one actually is. So then at the end of everything, you can just find open parentheses and close parentheses number one and replace with uh, whatever this MLA parenthetical citing is that I just copied from online and then you just do replace all and you can see that it fixes everything so if I had like a ton of different sources using number one then you would just fix everything just by changing number one into that parenthetical source so I hope I see you guys in the next video hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to add styles to text inside of Google Docs so how you do that is if I wanted this to be my title of my page, I can just hover over this text and select it. And then I can hit this button right here that says styles. And then I just hit the title. Now you can see it looks like a title. And it made the font larger, so it's 26. And it also specifies this as a title, so it's easier to organize your document. So if I want this one to be a subtitle, I can just hover over it. And then I hit subtitle. Now you can see it automatically made my changed my t font size and my text color to a little bit grayer. Then your eyes focus more on the title. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the font of your text in Google Docs. So I'm just going to put some text in here, and I'm going to put in changing the font in. Google Docs. And as you can see, it has all the default stylings with Arial 11 font size and all black font. And so, how you do that is you just select the text that you want to change, and then you just hit this font button right here, and it should open up a drop down. And then you're able to pick any of these different fonts that you would like to add. So, I could pick caveat, and then it would change the font to that. So if I want to change all of this, I can do Control or Command A, select all of that, next, and then I can hit Font. And if you want to pick a different styling of that font, so if I want to pick Comforta, then if I hover over it, then it has the different stylings of that font. So Light, which is a very thin font, and then there's Bold, which is very uh, thick. So if I hit Bold, then you can see that it's the width of the lines is way uh, wider. So if you want to 
use fonts that aren't inside of this scroll bar. So if you want to have a larger library, you can just hit this more fonts right here. And then it'll show up this search for all the different fonts. So as you can see here, you can see all these different fonts that aren't inside of the drop down that you have, and you can add them to your drop down. Actually, I like this righteous. I'm just going to click on this, and then if I hit OK, I'll add this to my library in my recent, and it also adds it into my library down here. So I can click on this font, and then I can use it whenever I would like to. So this is actually automatically bold. So if I want to just toggle this, I can just hit that to change the font to the unbold. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this video. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the font size of text in Google Docs. So you just have to select the text that you would like to change the font size of. So I'm just going to select all of this. And then you can hit this drop down if you would like to pick one of their preset numbers. Or you can also hit this text uh, number right here, and you're able to input your own number. So if I wanted to put in 27, which isn't on their dropdown, no, 37 actually, and then if I press enter, it'll change it to that number. And if I want to pick one of their presets, I can just pick on that number. And as you can see, it automatically updates. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make font bold inside of Google Docs. So how you do that is you select the text that you want to change, or you can select all of that using Control or Command A. And I just want to change this Google Docs to be bold. So you can hover over the, or uh, select this text, and then press this B right here on to the right of this font size. So if I hit that B, it'll make the text bold. As you can see with this font, you, it's hard to tell that the text is bold. So if I just want to change this to Georgia, and then I make this bold by hitting the B, you can see that this font is bold. And also, if you wanted to do a, uh, if you wanted to have a shortcut to make it bold, it's automatically Control B. So you can easily toggle the bold by doing Control B. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make font italicized in Google Docs. So how you do that is you select the text that you want to make italicized. I just want to italicize font size, so I'm going to select that text. And then I'm just going to hit this uh, slanted I, which is just italicized I, and that will make your text italicized. So if you wanted to do a shortcut for this, just hover over the text and you can do control or command i and that'll make it that'll toggle if it's italicized or not so i hope i see you guys in the next video hello everyone and in this video i'll be showing you how to make text underlined in google docs so how you do that is you select the text that you want to make underlined i'm just gonna select this google docs text and then I'm just going to press this U with an underline under it. And make sure you don't confuse this with the text color icon button. So I'm just going to hit this U. As you can see, it gets underlined. So if you wanted to have a shortcut, so then you can uh, make your text underlined easier and faster, you can just select the text again and then do Control U. And then I'll toggle whether it's underlined or not. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the color of the text in Google Docs. So how you do that is you just select the text that you would like to change the color of. So I'm just going to change the Google Docs text. And then you just hit this A with the color of the text right now uh, button. And then once you hit that, it'll show all of these different colors. So you can click these colors and it'll change the text to that color. So I'm just going to change it to dark corn file blue too, and then it'll show that the text is that color. So if you wanted to ch pick a custom color or a hex code, you would just select that text. I'm just going to change the beginner to master text. 
I'm going to hit the A with the, the current color under it. And then you just hit custom. And then once you do that, it lets you, it opens up a color picker. And you can change the hue of the color. I'm just going to make this a red. And then I'll show the preview of the color right now, right there. I'm going to make it kind of bright. And then I just press OK. And if you wanted to change a color to that later, it stores that on the bottom, the previous custom color. And then you just press that, and it'll change it to it. As, as you can see there, it also has a pop-up in the... Uh, it shows that it is close to light red 1. So if you wanted to use one of the presets, you could find light red 1, which is right here. Uh, wait, no. Right here. And then you could press that, and you can see it's close to this. So if you wanted to use the presets, you could do that. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to highlight text in Google Docs. So how you do that is you select the text that you want to highlight, or you can do Control or Command A to select all of the text, and then you just press this marker button that has the pop-up that says Highlight Color, which is right to the right of this text color button. And so once you hit that, it shows all of these different colors that you can pick. I'm just going to pick this color right here. And you can see it highlights all of the text in that color. And so one thing to note, if you do pick the white color right here, it, you can see that you don't see any changes. But if you printed this on a different color, then you would actually see the white on the background. So make sure you don't uh, make that mistake. So just make sure you pick none, which is transparent. So you can see I can change all of it by doing Control A. Or I can select a certain amount of text, and I can change that to this dark orange 3. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a link inside of Google Docs. So how you do this is you select the text that you want to create the link for, and then you press this little link icon. It says insert link, and then once you press that, it opens up a dialog. And so you can change the text that it appears as. If I press backspace, backspace, and I, you can change what it appears as. And then you can just press insert this link right here. I'm just going to paste in this link to Google Docs. And I'm going to press apply. As you can see, it automatically underlines the text. So if you were to click on this, once you viewed this as uh, somebody who doesn't own, isn't able to edit the document, and you can see right here that it's a link and it would take you to that page. So if you wanted to uh, have a shortcut for this, you could just select the text, do Control K, and then I'll create a link. And you can search for something. So if I wanted to just click on this document, then it automatically creates a link that will share this document. If I press apply, then people can hover over this. And if I open this up in a new tab, and you can see it opens up this document. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add comments in Google Docs. So how you do that is you select the text that you want to add as comment, and we just hit that suggestion, and I'm going to select this blue men, and then I just want to add a comment for this because it's actually supposed to be red men, and I'm a person who's grading this right now. So you're able to share this actually, but we're going to learn how to do that later so then people can actually only add comments instead of changing all of this stuff on your document. So to do that, you just have to hit this plus icon inside of like a voice pop-up, and you can see the shortcut is Control or Command, Alt, M. I'm just going to hit that, and you can see my name right there, so I'm probably going to blur that out, but I'm just going to say it's actually Redmen. And I can add that comment. And then you can see the text is highlighted right there where the comment is. And then so once that person is going to fix it who actually owns the document, you can just change this to red men. And then hit the resolve button. And then boom, the comment's gone. And you can see that our document is fixed. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add images into your Google Docs document. So actually, 
To add an image, you have to click on this icon or this drop down right here. And you can see there are many different methods that you can upload an image through. You can upload it to your drive, take it from your photos, find an image URL, use your camera to take one right now, to upload it from your computer. But I'm just going to be searching the web for one. And I actually just want to search the Blue Men group because I thought of that when I was thinking about the Blue Men. So we're just going to add them. And then you just hit this insert button. So then you can see it just automatically adds an image in here. And you can see there are many different options for these images. And so the first one is inline. So that makes it so then you can like type after this and it's just like it's actual text. So it's in the order of text. So just think of this as like a word or something. So it will be right after the words inside of the same line. Also, you can have wrap text. So then the text just goes completely around it. And then you can see there's more options here. You can change a fixed position. So this lets you move it around anywhere, but the text will move around it. And then you can, I'm just going to do move with text. And then you can have break text. Then the text, it won't go around it. It'll just find a new place to be. And you can move it anywhere on the screen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And so I hope I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the alignment of text in Google Docs. So the first alignment option, which is actually the default on all Google Docs documents, is left align, and you can see all the shortcuts in the black box. And so basically that just makes all the text go to the left. The second alignment option that we're going to see is if I just copy this, is the central align. So you can just hit this one or do control shift E. And then the third one is right align. So this is pretty simple. You just have to do right align right there. And if you want to select multiple ones to change the alignment, you can just highlight all that text and then press left align. It'll change all of it to that. I'm just going to do control Z so then you can see all of this, which is undo. And then the final alignment is justify, which is a little bit confusing, but basically it makes it so then uh, the text takes up the whole width. So then if I copy all of this and paste it without formatting using control shift V and I make all of this on left align. And let me just copy this. Then we can have some dummy text. And then if I put this on to justify, you can see that the ending, actually this isn't that good of an example because this is always going to end and begin at the same time. So I'm just going to change this to blue C yellow, and I spelled that wrong. And we're also going to purple. And you can see that the beginning and ending will always be at the edges. So a lot of newspapers and books use justify uh, content. So then it'll always begin right here at the far left. It'll change the spaces so then they're wider and the spacing between characters so then it's perfectly beginning and ending the end of each line. So I hope I see you guys in the next Hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to change the line spacing of text in Google Docs. So I have a little uh, introduction about William Shakespeare from the Wikipedia on William Shakespeare because that's the first person, person who came to my mind. So I'm just going to change this font to Comic Sans and change this to 12 point font. And so it looks a little bit better, but the text, it looks like the vertical uh, margin is too little. So how to change the line spacing is just by hitting this uh, icon right here with three lines stacked on top of each other with this double sided arrow. So you just hit this. And you can see that you can change the line spacing to all these different ones. So this is single, which is just one, and the default is 1.15. And then you have one and a half, double, and 
you can also add spaces after paragraphs, before paragraphs, and you can add in custom spacing, line spacing, and paragraph spacing. So this is like the one and a half double spacing. So I'm just going to hit cancel, and I want to actually make this double spacing. You can see now all of the lines are double spaced apart, and you can change this to one and a half spacing. And I usually use one and a half spacing because I feel like double spacing is just too much. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add a numbered list into Google Docs. So, I'm going to be using a the directions from a pancakes recipe on all recipes. And so I'm just going to copy and paste these in. I'm going to do Control shift v so then I paste it without formatting. So that's the same as just copying this and pasting it in and then selecting all this text and then pressing the clear formatting button. And then I actually want it to be like this. So I'm just going to do Control shift v and then I'm going to get this third direction. Okay, so now you have all of these directions, but you need to order them. Now how you do that is a simple way to make it so that it automatically puts one, two, three for all of these. It's just by selecting all of this, and then since this is separated by uh, a new line, you can just do click this numbered list button, and you can see it automatic automatically makes one, two, and three. And it also adds a tab difference between the first letter right here and the complete left side of your page. So you can also customize this by if I click on this and I right click you can see that there are different options for how you can have your numbered list. And you can also change it to a bullet point list so then it's not really numbered. You can see it changes to this bulleted list or you can also change it to an uppercase A, a lowercase A so then it's lowercase letters, Roman numerals, a lowercase Roman numerals, I think. I press another, yeah, lowercase number Roman numerals. And then you can also change the edit prefix and suffix. So if I click on this, you can see the prefix, which is before this number. So if I hit, if I just do a number, and then the suffix, if I add an equals, just then we can see this, and apply to the whole list, list and I can change this to numbers, you can see number one equals. So you can add what begins and ends the numbers that it has before this. And I'm actually just going to delete it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. You can also see all of the different bullets you can have. But I just want to remove this because we don't need it right now. And you can see that you can create a numbered list in Google Docs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a bulleted list, or an unordered list, inside of Google Docs. So I have a Pancakes 1 recipe from All Recipes, and I'm just going to copy some of these ingredients, so that we can, they can be on our bulleted item list. I'm just going to copy all of these. Sorry about that. It's just the Udemy course. And we'll just add in this one because we don't really need all of them. And if you want it to automatically bullet all of these, you can just highlight all of them and then press this bulleted list. But they must be separated by new lines. I'm just going to hit this and you can see it automatically creates a list of bullets. And if you wanted to if you were just creating them like uh, item by item, you could just do so item, or actually you would do asterisk and then you do a space and you could see it automatically creates a bullet. And if you want to just do item one and then I press enter and it automatically creates a new bullet. Item two, item three, and then if I press enter and then I, I'm on this bullet and I press enter again, it'll escape from the, from the list. I'm just going to delete this now, and then we're going to create our bulleted list again. And then now we can change the, it's just like the ordered list, except you can't change the prefix and suffix. So I can just hit more bullets, and you can change the characters that begin all of it. 
Yeah, you can get, there's a lot of different customizations that you can add. I'm just going to be sticking with the regular old bullet point, though. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to decrease and increase the indent of your Google Docs document. So first of all, I'm going to just put in a name, this is my name, and I just want to make it so that it's more to the left of this ordinary text. But to do that, all I have to do is select this text right here and press this decrease indent, or actually increase indent. As you can see, the arrow is pushing the uh, line right here in the center to the right. I'm going to press this, and you can see it makes it go to the right. Also press the tab to do that. And if you want to make it go back, you can just press this decrease indent, or you can press shift tab. The tab is how you go forwards, and shift tab is how you go back. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to clear the formatting from text inside of Google Docs. So as you can see here, I have four completely differently formatted uh, sentences of the same content. And to clear the formatting, or just reset it to the default, I can just select this text, and then press this clear formatting button. And that just puts it to the default, so then it's Arial. 11 font size black text. And I can just do Control A or Command A to select all of this text, and then I just press Clear Formatting. You can see now it looks exactly the same. Uh, if I can, I can also show you that this also works for the styles. So if I change this to a title, and I just do Control A, and then hit Clear Formatting, you can see that it doesn't change the style uh, the style of text when you do clear formatting. I don't really know why it doesn't, but it doesn't. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to toggle print layout in Google Docs. So how you do that is you go to the view tab right underneath the title right here, and you click on it and you can see all of these different options. We're going to be hitting the print layout, and this is automatically checked. So to turn print layout off, all you have to do is hit it, and then you should be able to see that when you go all the way to the bottom of your pages, if I press enter a bunch of times, there we go, see that the breaks between pages, if I type in, and then let me just bigger. Okay, if I type in text, you can see breaking at the end of the pages it looks like this. If I change it into the print layout, you can see there's more space and you can see the margins of the page. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you all the different modes in Google Docs. The default mode for documents that you create is editing. And that's where we have all of these options and we're able to add text to the page. So we're like the owner of the document. The second view is to access it. You go to view tab right here and then you go to mode. You hover over this and then you can change your mode. And so the second tab I'm going to be showing you is suggesting. If I click on this, you can see that it says right here that it's suggesting, suggesting you can also toggle where you want to be right here. So in suggesting, when you change content on the page, it suggests that come that come, that change to the owner. They can see that, but it doesn't do it. I'm just gonna fix this paragraph where it has errors. I'm just gonna put in is, and I'm gonna fix this to be writing. And also, this is supposed to be Times New Roman 12 point font so that we can follow MLA standards. So I'm just going to do Control A, 
We're going to change the font. Times New Roman, if I can find it on here. There. And then we're going to put 12 point font. Double space in. And now you can see all of the different changes that I did. Then if I change my view back to editing, this is how the owner would see it. You can see all of the different changes that I've done. I've changed the the formatting. You can see I made a bold, bold font, font size, line spacing. I added in all of these. And then the owner just hits check mark. And then it'll automatically do all of these changes. Or you could just see what the changes would look like. But now it changed everything to what I did. And the third and final mode that we're going to be learning, the view mode or viewing mode, and that is just for reading or printing the final document. If I click on this, you can see that you can only highlight the text, you can't change anything. You can only see it, and if I want to print it, I can click right here and hit the print button, or I can do control P. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Jordan, in this video, we showed you how to toggle all of the different options for view in Google Docs. So to access these toggling functions that we can add, you can just hit this view button, and you see a drop down with all of these different things that we can show. So we can show ruler, document outline, which is right here, equation toolbar, show section breaks. So I want to just turn all of these on. See. This looks like math. So if I did a new equation right here, and that is the equation toolbar. If I just hit new equation, if I do 2x plus 4, you can see that it's formatted in math. So if I also wanted to do all of these operations, or add in less than or greater than all of these different symbols, do square root, square root of 4. As you can see, you can add that into Google Docs, and it sees this as one big math uh, text. So that's the math, or the equation toolbar. The next toolbar is the show section breaks, and that's basically if you have text. So let me just turn off this equation toolbar. If you have a title, title, and then we're going to have a subtitle. Subtitle. Yeah, I have amazing names for all of this. And we're going to have some content. And then we're going to have a heading one. And if I should be able to hit this, you can see the main bullet points right here. So it shows the titles and the headings of your Google Docs website or Google Docs document. So it's way easier to organize everything if you just put this as a title. And then if you're looking at a huge research paper, it's you're easily able to see all of the content on your page, the main content on your document by just clicking on all of these. You can also remove them from the outline. So that is the document outline. And then the last one we're going to learn is show ruler which just basically shows the margin lengths on the page. This grayed out area right here is the top margin. And you can see that the grayed out area right here is also the left margin. So these are the margins of the page. So if I follow this line, you can see that this is the topmost text. And this line right here is the leftmost text. You can also see the tab by this first line indent box right there. So if I do a tab, I should be able to see that the tab is this far. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I see you in the next one. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to toggle full screen in Google Docs. So how you do this is just by hitting this view button right here, and then hitting the full screen button. If I hit this, you can see that it removes the controls on the top and also some things on the left. So if I do escape, press escape, which is on the top left of your keyboard, 
and then I'll hide all of this. So all you can see is the is the text that you can write. I'm just going to transition this again by pressing escape and then we're going to do full screen again. So this is like a more minimalistic view. You can also turn off the rulers by just hitting right here and also the document outline. And if I just hit full screen again, see that all you see is this document that you can type on. I hope you see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to add a table to Google Docs using the insert tab. So to add a table, all you have to do is go to the insert tab right here, click on it, and then scroll down to where it says table. So right here you have all of these different cells and the dimensions that are above my cursor right now are how many cells there are going to be. So if I have three by three, there's going to be three across and three vertically, and then you'll have a total of nine. So I just want a two by three table and I'm just going to click right there and you can see it automatically creates the table. So some of the styling that you can have for tables is if I do select all of this and I right click I can go to table properties or you can also merge cells. See that you can also actually insert rows and columns. So if I want to insert three rows above right there just insert three rows above. You can also delete things by pressing the delete button or just by right clicking right here you can do delete row. I select this whole column. Yeah, I can do delete column, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I wanna just do I just want to do the table properties by clicking on this. And you can see all of these settings that you can change. Cell vertical alignment. You can have middle, up. Uh, or bottom. Basically what this means is if I have it on top, you can see if I change the size of this cell to be very big, I could put in if I wanted it to be centered vertically aligned, then I can just select all of this. Or I can actually just select this one by double click into the box or select all of this and then right click. And table properties, I can do cell vertical alignment, middle. So then you can see it aligns everything vertically. I can also under align this, then it's in the complete center of this box. If I text and type into this one, and you can see it doesn't do center, uh, it doesn't have the same formatting because I have to do table properties on this one again. Or you can just select the whole table and hit table properties and do middle align and I can also click center align and you can see all of this is in the center. Also you're able to change the column widths, minimum row widths, add some cell padding. If I set this to one, you can see that there is one inch of padding from here to the border. I select all of it. So this is useful for creating flashcards. I select all this again. We're going to lower the padding to 0 0.01. And you can change the table alignment, left indent, cell background color, table border, and this is the amount of points that it is. To make it very big, you can see that there's solid lines. I'm going to do that though because I don't like the size of that. I'm going to change the cell padding to 0 0.01. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope I see you guys in the next one. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add a Google drawing into Google Docs. Now how you do that is you go to the insert tab, scroll down until you see the drawing right here. And then you can add a drawing that you've already made from Drive or create a new one. So I'm just going to create a new one. And then you can see it opens up an editor right here. If I wanted to just add in a We'll add in this right here, and then we'll add in some, and then we're just going to select out of this, add a text box, 
we're gonna say pow and let's just make this ant or impact we'll increase this font size and then we can just put this in the center of this if I want to add this into my Google Docs document you just do save and close you can see it automatically adds it in and you can resize it by changing this and it has the same properties as the images for changing all of this I hope I see you guys in the next video Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add a chart into Google Docs. How you do that is you hit the insert tab right here, then you scroll down until you see chart. And then I want to create a column chart. And so you can see inserting the chart. And then boom, we have the chart created. Then you can see that it has all of the options right here, where you can unlink it, and I can view the source by hitting this. And it'll open up a spreadsheet with all of the data right here so it's pulling the data from the spreadsheet and then it's adding it into this i can actually since this is linked right here and it will automatically pull the data from here so if i want to go all the way to here so that i can see this you can see the numbers right here for all of the uh, different data you see team one team two team three team four if i want to just put in carter what happened there? Carter. And then we're going to say points. And then we're going to say games. And if I say 100 points in one game, see that it shows the values onto this chart right here. And if I refresh the page on this Google Docs, or you can also hit the update button right here. Let me show the update button. Change this to five. See, there's an update button. If I just hit that, you can see it updates the chart. And you can see that they're the same properties as an image that we already learned earlier in the formatting section. You can crop everything, the image options, the alt, text, and all of these size and rotation options. And adjustments and recolor. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to add in a horizontal line into Google Docs. So let's say that I have a large title right here. I uh, will do 30. We have our title right here, and then we want to have our content. Let me change this. Actually, let me make this font size a little bit smaller. There we go. So to make it so that I separate this more, I might want to add a horizontal line. How you do that is I just want to this insert button right here. And then you can see horizontal line right here. I click this. You can see it inserts it automatically right underneath this. I can backspace this enter right here. And then I have this horizontal line between this content. Well, this, this distance between this amazing title and the line doesn't look the same as this. Now how you change that, you can also press the enter right here. Or you can select this and then change the font size to like 20. And it changes the size of the line. See, it automatically fixes everything with the sizes. I want to change this to 10. See the difference between the distance between this text and this line has decreased. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'm showing you how to add a footnote into Google Docs. So if I wanted to say the man emphasized, and I don't think I spelled that right, how um, Great, the idea was. I actually did spell that right. But so if I wanted to do superscript on this, and I should just be able to do control plus dot, and then you can see it does superscript. And I just want to put in a one right here. And then to create a footnote so that I can define what emphasize means, I can just do insert and then footnote. Or which is also Control Alt F. So let's try the shortcut. Control Alt F. 
see it automatically creates a footnote. So for this, I can just do the definition of emphasize or to show. And I should be able to just switch this emphasize. I'm just going to copy this definition, control C, and then control V, paste it in. See right here, when somebody's reading this document, actually, edit that right there for some reason. See that if they didn't understand what emphasize me meant, they could just scroll down to our footnote here. We just do control X, and then paste in the one right there. You can see it's still there. So they can see what it means by right down here seeing the definition. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to add special characters, equations, into Google Docs. Well, let's just say I wanted to have the omega sign inside of my Google Docs document. So I could just say omega sign, and then we'll put a colon, and then let me just say, hit the insert button. And then I'm just going to go to special characters right here. And we're going to click on this. You can see all of these special characters. If I search Omega, hopefully they have this Meg recognized as the Omega sign. Okay, right here. And I can just hit this. You can see it added the Omega sign into my Google Docs document. But also what we're able to do is add in equations into Google Docs. I'm just going to hit this equation button. You can see it creates an equation. You can also, you turn on the equation toolbar, which is right here, by changing the view, the equation toolbar on. So we showed that in the previous section. So I can just add in 1x. Wait, I got to click on this again. 1x plus 4 equals 2. And then I can say, I'm just going to delete all this. You can see it has a different font for it. So I'm going to say the square root x equals, I'm going to break out of that, equals uh, x over 2. You can see that you can have all of the math operators side of here then you're able to add math into Google Docs. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to add headers and footers into Google Docs. So let's say that you need to add a header onto your Google Docs page that says your name. So I'm just gonna double click on the top. You can see it opens up the header options. And another way to access this is by hitting the insert button and then scrolling down to headers and footers and then hitting the header or hitting the header button right here. You can also add a footer by hitting this button or doing this, uh, these shortcuts. So I, you can also just double click for the header and the footer would be. And you can only do the double clicking method when you are on print layout. Make sure you have that on. So I'm just going to add in a header that says, to put right a line on here, like Carter's paper. And then you can see it will add that onto every single page. So if I press enter a ton, you can see it adds this header onto it again. You can also make it so that it's different on the first page. I'm going to say Carter's report. And then I'll say Carter's paper on the second and all ones after the second page. And these options continue for the uh, footer too. You can see there are also options that you can change. You can have header format. I hit this. You can change the margins and different odd and even. Hit cancel. You can also remove the header or add page numbers. So I'm going to click the page numbers. And we are going to have, we're going to put this on the footer. I actually don't want it on the header because I already have this amazing X right there. 
that I want to show it on the first page. And we're going to start at 1. I'm going to hit apply. See, it automatically adds in a page number at the bottom right of every single page. And you can see I can add in my default formatting. So if I want it to be impact and I want the font size to be 20. And you can see it actually doesn't change for all of them. Maybe you have to change the footer format. See all of this. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make text strike through in Google Docs. Now let's say that I want to say delete this. So I am just want to add a strike through through this text. How I do that is I'm just going to select this text right here. I'm going to hit the format button. See it opens up a drop down. Now I'm going to go to text. See it opens up another menu. And I'm going to scroll. Go to the strike through. See the shortcut is Alt Shift 5. Like this, you can see that it adds a strike through, through, through the text. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello, everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to add superscripts and subscripts into your Google Docs document. So to add a superscript, all you have to do is go on to say, First, if I wanted to say first place, oh, formatting, place. And I'm going to put first right here. I have a one. I want to add an ST in superscript. I'm going to hit the format button, go to text, go onto this menu, and then go to superscript. Now, I would advise not using this shortcut. Because Control Plus will actually make the page zoom in. So it'll always zoom in when you're trying to do the shortcut. So just go to Format Text and Superscript. And then click this. And then you can see it makes your text on uh, small and position toward the top. I'm going to do ST. And then I'm going to click off of it. And you can say it says first place. So if I want to do a subscript, so if I say O, and then I want to say H2O for water. So instead of just doing H2O, which looks like H20, I'm going to, to make this two subscript, I'm going to select it, go to format, text, and then subscript. Click this. You can say, see, it says H2O. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I see you in the next one. Hello, everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to convert text to lowercase capital uppercase and title case to do that i'm just going to create three different uh pieces of text i'm going to say m emperor 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 okay so i have this i add in was great i'm going to just this Changes impact 30, and we'll put an editor faces out. And now, so then I want to add in, I want to change this to lowercase, the first one to lowercase. I'm going to select this and make it completely lowercase. I'm going to click this right here. Go to text, capitalization, and lowercase. And boom, it makes it all lowercase. Now I'm going to select this, that I want to make it uppercase. I'm going to go to Format, Text, Capitalization, and Uppercase. Now make it all uppercase. Now I want to make this one title case. Where the first letter in every single word is uppercase. I'm going to select all of this. Format, Text, Capitalization. We're going to do title case. Actually, I just want to see if I have the... Normally, you don't capitalize the inside of titles unless if it's the first word right here. I'm also going to add a and the of a. Usually, these aren't capitalized because they aren't as important. So I'm going to do format, capitalization, title case. As you can see, it actually does uppercase. So you can change this. I wouldn't like that. I hope I see you guys in the next video.
Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create columns in Google Docs. So I have this dummy text right here, and I just want to make it so that it has two columns. One right here, and one right here. So to do that, I can select all of this text, and then I just want to go to Format, and Columns. And then I can just click how many ever columns I want. If I want two columns, I hit this. You can see it automatically makes this two columns. In the settings that we have for this, I go back to columns, I can do more options. You can see I can change the number of columns, so if I want to add three at the maximum, and the spacing between the columns is default 0.5 inches, so if I wanted to make it one inch, and if I wanted to add a line between the columns. See, it adds in lines between the columns, and I'm actually going to just make this back to column. This looks nice. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add words to your dictionary so then Google Docs doesn't recognize them as unknown words or errors. You can see it's trying to correct this saying that it's a spelling error. So I what if I actually wanted to say this word right here and I wanted to, and I was going to say the word a lot so then it wouldn't Mark this word as an error. I could just highlight this word, go to tools, spelling and grammar, and then personal dictionary. And then I can just type in that word. So F E S A K F J. I can add it right there. And you can see all of the words that are in your dictionary right here. I'm just going to delete this because I'm going to show you another way to add words to your dictionary. I'm going to hit the OK, and I'm going to right click it, and you can see right here there is a button that says add FDSAKFJ to dictionary, and I'm just going to, so you can see it added it to personnel dictionary, so I can type this many times as I would like, and it won't give me an error. If I go to tools, spelling and grammar, personal dictionary. I can see that it's been added to my personal dictionary. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to get the word count of your Google Docs document. So I have a bunch of dummy text inside of this document, and I just want to get the amount of words inside of it. So to do that, I can do Control shift c or I can go to Tools and hit Word Count. See the shortcut right here? So I'm just going to hit it. You can see that I have 335 words in here. I have 2,187 characters, and I have 1,856 characters without the spaces included. And actually, you can display the word count while you're typing by hitting this button. So you can see your words, and you can click on this. You can see all of the details of your page. So if I copy this whole thing again, and I just want to paste it again right here. See, it increases everything. I have two pages, all of these words, characters, and all of that. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello, everyone, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert documents into another language or translate them. But to do that, all you have to do is hit the Tools tab right here, and then go down to Translate Document, which is right here. And I'm just going to click this see that you can change the new document title and I'm just going to say German copy of Google Docs Mastery Course and then I'm going to choose the language and I'm going to find German right here and then I'm going to hit translate and you can see that it's opening up the page that is translating you can see that now all of this is in German if I go to translate.google.com if I want to translate this from uh, detect language to English, see that this is the German text translated into the English. So it uses Google Translate to translate all of your document. It keeps all of the same formatting, so it's in the same font. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use voice typing in Google Docs which also uses your microphone. But to do this, you have to hit the Tools tab right here, 
and then go down to voice typing or you can do control shift s i'm going to hit this and then you have to do click to speak so i'm going to click this and it would ask you for translation for permissions but i already gave it permissions so you can see that it's actually typing out all of the text that i'm saying right now and this also actually actually added in a fraction right here and i'm just losing focus because it's typing right now and you can see where i where my cursor is it starts typing so it kind of messed up right there where i accidentally clicked so now I'm going to say an example sentence right now. And this is the example sentence. I'm just going to end this by clicking this button right here. And as you can see right here, you can say period or new line. And I'm sure there's other things that you're able to say that it'll just put in the exact uh, actual character. And you can move this around and you can select your language that you're using. Just going to press the X because that's how you use voice typing in Google Docs on Chrome. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you the preferences and substitutions that you can automatically add into Google Docs. So I'm just going to delete this text right here, sorry about that. And so we're going to hit the tools tab right here. We're going to go down to preference. Click on this. You can see all of these different settings that Google Docs automatically uses. So this one, automatically capitalize words, part quotes, automatically detect links, automatically detect lists, suggest action items, suggest contacts and comments, the link details. I actually advise you to turn on all of these, except for maybe the automatically capitalized words if you don't like that. But I'm just, I would just leave all of these the same. And another, like, really useful Thing in the preferences menu is the substitutions and so this automatically replaces this text with this symbol so for example the long dash so um i believe it's called the m dash i can just copy this so the regular dash is this size while the longer dash or m dash is this size so this is the dash that is used inside of books. They don't use this dash. If I wanted to replace this double dash with this long dash or M dash, then I can just do double dash, replace it with this. If I hit OK, and also you have to have a automatic substitution on, I wanted to do dash dash, and then I press Enter, see it automatically replaces that, that with this symbol. Also, I can use the copyright symbol by doing this, then pressing enter, and I can use all of the other symbols that are inside of here. Also, if you mess up and you say you type ha all the time instead of instead of the, then you can make it, then it automatically changes ta to the so if I am like a boy it replaces it with the so this can help with your bad habits you misspell a lot of words wrong a lot so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I see you in the next one hello everyone and in this video I'll be showing you how to share documents in Google Docs so how you do this is you click on this file button right here and you hit the share button. Also, you're able to hit the share button right here. As you can see, I haven't shared it with anybody, so nobody else is able to view this document except for me. But if I wanted to share it with a certain person, then I could add their email address in here, or I could try to type in their name, and if they are in my contacts, and it would automatically put their email in there. Also, you're able to change you are able to make it so that editors are not able to change access and add new people right here. And you are able to disable options to download, print, and copy for commenters and viewers. So if I'm just going to hit this done button and then we're going to click back on the share button. And if I wanted to get a link so then people could click on it and see the document, then I can click this. And you can change their permissions right here. 
anyone with this link can view, anyone can comment, and edit. I would suggest that you usually only have it so then they can view or can comment. So, if you're sharing it with your teacher, then you do can comment, and then you'd send them this link. So if I will shift N, so then it doesn't say that I'm logged in, and I go to this page, then you should be able to see the document but you're able to comment on it. As you can see, you can suggest on it. You don't even have to log in to be able to do this. So I can see right here that they are making a suggestion right now, and it's real time. So this is very useful for if you have to send it to a peer for homework, and they have to um, read over your essay and then check it over. And you could just send them this link, and then they could just write the suggestions on there. So that's if you can comment, or you could make it so that anyone with that link can view, so then they can't comment. Also, you're able to let them edit, but I would definitely be careful with this link, because they can completely ruin your document. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to copy a Google Docs document. Let me just write in original copy, and then let me just paste in some dummy text there. And then we can again and again. And then let me set this as a title. You can see right here. And then let me just copy this document. So I'm going to hit the file button. And then I'm just going to make a copy. And then once I hit this, you can rename the copy and set the folder that it will be in. You can also set it so then if you shared any people the document, then it will share this copy with them again. And it will you can also set it so then it copies the comments and suggestions. I'm gonna hit OK. You can see it opens up the comment automatically, much like with the translation tool that we're able to use. And you can see it opens up this comment or this uh, copy of the document. So if I change stuff on this, I make it copy of original. And if I go back to the home, you should be able to see that I have two different documents on here. Copy of Google Docs Mastery, and then Google Docs Mastery. So if I open up the original one, see right here, original copy. And then you can also see copy. So I hope you guys watch the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to download your document as a PDF, as a .docx for Microsoft Word, and in all of those formats. Now how you do that is, I'm on my document right now, and I'm just going to hit File, and then I'm going to go over to this Download button. And you can see all of these different formats that you can download your Google Docs document as you can even download it as a web page. I'm just going to be opening it up, downloading it as a PDF document. I'm going to click on this. See it open. It's going to open up a saving pop up where I want to save the document. And you can see it right here. So I'm going to set desktop and then I'm going to hit save. And I should be able to open up this document. I'm just clicking on it and it opens up with Chrome. And you can see the PDF of my document right here. As you can see, since it's a PDF, it shows a different highlighting instead of the one in Google Docs. So also you're able to download it in different formats like DocX. I want to just download it as DocX. The desktop. I should be able to just double click on this. You can see it's opened it up in Microsoft Office. I hope you guys watch the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to see the version history of a, of a Google Docs document. So let's say that you accidentally shared your document, and you let other people edit it, and your document share link got linked onto Twitter. And so everybody went to your document, and the whole thing was just completely ruined. You deleted everything. How to restore this is to look at the version history. To look at the version history is you go to File, 
version history, and then you can just seek version history. Click on this, and you can see right here, 1024, and I have all of these different versions of the document. I can click on this one, and you can see all of the changes I've made. I'm just going to hit restore this version, hit restore. Do obviously you want to restore the version that has the content that you had before everybody removed it all and changed everything. So as you can see, it has restored the version from 1027 and it's 1031 right now. So I hope you guys watch the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you how to add a Google Docs document to a folder inside of your Google Drive. So how you do this is you go up to where you name the document and you can rename it. And you just hit this folder icon that has the move underneath it when you hover over it. I'm just going to hit this. And you can see that it has all of these different uh, files that I have inside of my drive. And I can just create a folder right here. Let's just name this courses. So you could obviously just name this like the name of your class. And then you could put all the documents for that class inside of here. So I'm going to hit move here. And so this is basically just for organizational uses. Then when I go to my drive, you should be able to see all of my folders inside here. And as you can see, folders right here, and I can open up courses. So I could be able to open up like a biology folder and then see all of my biology uh, documents and drawings and charts and everything. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video I'll be explaining to you guys what an add-on is. So basically an add-on is something that you install, then you're able to have more functions in Google Docs. So, for example, if I create a title, amazing title, I create a heading one, amazing heading one, and then I also create a heading two. Now if I turn on the document outline see this outline right here and this believe it or not is actually an add-on that is pre-installed with google docs then you're able to edit your outline and remove things from it and it automatically adds in headings to your outline that is basically what an add-on is i see you guys in the next video hello everyone and in this video i'll be showing you how to install an add-on in google docs how you do that is you hit the add-ons tab right here and then you hit get add-ons now you can see it opens up a pop-up which we should be able to search a bunch of different add-ons so i'm just going to install the math type add-on should allow us to add in math into our google docs i'm just going to hit the install button we're going to have to give it some permissions so then it's able to run and do its job. And we can see everything that it needs. And we're just going to hit allow. And now we can see that it's installing it right now. And getting all of the data from our permissions. And so we can see math type inside of the add-ons button. I'm going to hit done. And we can see this allows us to create mathematical notation. And it looks like it saves it as an image. I'm just going to exit off of this. Delete this. And we're just going to hit add-ons, math type. And we're going to hit insert math equation. And so we can see that we're able to use these add-ons by just clicking on the add-ons button and hovering over the name of the add-on. In the next video, we're going to be learning how to actually use these add-ons. So I hope you guys watch the next video. Hello everyone, and in this video, we're going to, I'm going to be showing you how to use an add-on in Google Docs. So actually the add-on that we installed in the last video 
It requires a subscription to be able to type in a mathematical equation. So we're just going to install a new add-on right now. And we just want to install the highlight tool. I'm going to hit the install button. We're going to go through all of this again. Continue. And hopefully this one won't require a subscription to be able to use it. And hit allow. It's working. Okay, good. It's installed. Now we can just hit the add-ons button. Hover over this. Hit start. That should open up an option over here. Where we can actually use it. So I want to just put the highlighter library. I'm going to create and edit highlighters and sets. And let's create a new set. We can name this red. Save this. Now it should load this up again. Should be able to just put in some text. Oh, we have to select some text. And I just want to highlight the world is amazing. I'm just going to hit red. And we can see that it highlights it red. So obviously, this is pretty simple to do by just highlighting this and then setting this to red. But you're able to save presets for all of these uh, for highlighting. So then maybe you don't want to have to pick the color every time. You could just hit this button right here. Also, there's many more add-ons on the library, so you could find all of the add-ons that will suit to your needs, like that math one, except you can get some subscriptions, so then you can use it. But there are also add-ons that allow you to type music notation into documents. I hope you guys watch the next video. Hello, everyone, and this is the last video of the Google Docs Mastery course. So I would like to just thank everyone for watching this course. I hope you're able to create documents and do all of the things that we learned inside of this course. It's changing the font, adding this as a heading, and everything, installing add-ons, adding your own dictionary, voice typing, everything. I'd just like to thank you for watching this whole course, and it's taken a lot of time for me to make. So, good luck.